Hey friend, if you are planning on visiting Glacier National Park, here are some tips that you definitely need to know before you go, including something that a lot of people mess up during the glacier trip planning process. My name is Ash, I'm a former park ranger and the founder of Dirt In My Shoes, and it is so important to me that you have a great vacation, which is why I'm here to share my Glacier trip planning tips with you. We'll talk about five things that you need to know before you visit Glacier, and I can't wait to get started so that you can make your dream trip a reality. Number one, Glacier National Park is extremely seasonal. So what I mean by that is that it does shut down for a good portion of the year. There's really only a few months there where you can get in and do everything that you're hoping to do. And so this is definitely where people make the biggest mistake when planning their trip to Glacier is that they don't uh, realize that we need to plan our trips during a certain time if you're hoping to get to everything. And so um, let's talk you through kind of what's open and the best time to visit Glacier National Park so that you can make sure that you plan your trip during the right time for you. Glacier National Park is famous for its spectacular mountain scenery, but consequently you have a very small window of time to explore the mountains of this park. So if you're a first time visitor to Glacier and you're hoping to drive the entire going to the sun road, which is the main road through Glacier National Park, that's where you'll get most of those trailheads and those gorgeous scenic views as you're driving through the park. But the going to the sun road is typically only fully open from about the beginning of July through the end of September, but that can change because depending on how much snow the park has gotten over the winter, uh, it may open later than that. And depending on when it gets snow for the upcoming winter, it may close down sooner than that. And so you've really got a short window of time where you can drive the entire going to the sun road. A lot of people plan their trips and a lot of people will plan their trip for June because that's usually a pretty good summer month to travel to the national parks, but they'll plan their trip for June not realizing that when they get to Glacier, you actually can't drive the entire road most of June. Sometimes the park road opens up uh, towards the end of June if it's been a low snow year and they're able to get it opened sooner. Uh, but typically, you know, you are going to want to wait until at least the beginning of July if you're a first time visitor and you're hoping to drive the entire going to the sun road. Okay, so let's take a look at the park. Um, here we have Glacier National Park and you'll see this main road that goes through the center of the park. This is the going to the sun road. So it connects West Glacier over here to St. Mary over here and uh, it climbs up, up, up into the mountains as you get into this area here. And so what happens is sometimes during the shoulder seasons, you know, you'll be able to get through part of the road. A lot of times it's open to about avalanche right here on this side. It might be open to around here on this side. But this middle section here of the going to the sun road typically doesn't open until later in the summer. So we're talking the end of June, beginning of July, sometimes even later than that, depending just on how much snow fell during the winter season. So most people who come to Glacier want to drive the entire going to the sun road. So that's why I mentioned this is usually the number one mistake that people make when planning their trip to Glacier National Park is they just don't realize that the season is so short if you're hoping to drive the entire road. Another thing you'll want to make note of is if you're hoping to hike any trails up in this area, this is like where the Hidden Lake Overlook Trail is, the Highline Trail's right over here. There's some really great trails up in this area, but these trails do stay snow covered for a good portion of the summer. And so even if the going to the sun road is fully open, say by the beginning of July, a lot of times the Highline Trail or the Hidden Lake Overlook Trail will still be snow covered and closed even a few weeks after that. So you'll wanna keep that in mind as you're trying to plan out when you wanna be in the park and what time you're hoping to visit. 
If you need additional help deciding the best time to visit Glacier National Park, you can click over to Dirt in My Shoes. I have a whole article here about the best time to visit. I break it down by month. And so you can see what's going to be open, what's going to be closed, what to expect, just depending on what time of the year and which month you're hoping to visit the park. Okay, my second tip for you, if you're planning on visiting Glacier, is that Glacier National Park is extremely crowded. So you may already know that, but let's talk it through what that means exactly for your vacation. Because Glacier sees millions of visitors every year. It's one of the top 10 most visited national parks. But on top of that, uh, just the way that Glacier is laid out and kind of the way that it works makes it feel like, I think, even busier than some of the parks that get even more visitors. And so because Glacier is so seasonal, uh, because it gives millions of visitors a year, uh, because it's a mountainous park and the parking lots are smaller, um, you're in kind of more of a crowded situation, it can feel super crowded. In Glacier National Park, your timing is everything. I think out of any national park, Glacier is one where it's just, you can control certain things and the best thing that you can do is pay attention to your timing, when you're where, uh, when you're trying to get parking, where you're staying can make a big difference. And so uh, with those things in mind, you know, you can make some decisions that will help Glacier feel less crowded, um, it will help you not feel like you're just stuck in traffic all day. It will help so that you can actually get parking at some of the busier spots in the park. So a few things you can control. You can control when you try to enter the park. You can control the time of day that you're trying to get to those busiest spots or the smallest parking lots. You can add in some off the beaten path activities so that you're not just in the busy spots all the time. You will still encounter traffic. That's just a given, that's the way the park is. But there are definitely, definitely things that you can do to minimize that and to have a really nice trip. Glacier National Park recently has put in an extra reservation system um, to minimize how many people are able to drive into the busiest parts of the park and kind of do some crowd control. Uh, this may change in the future. As of 2023, they are still doing this reservation system, but it's not meant to be a long-term solution. And so we'll see kind of what it evolves into as we move forward. But just keep in mind that you may need an extra reservation or they may have some type of program in place to help with the overcrowding in this park. Another thing that you may want to consider is riding the Glacier National Park shuttle. This is a free shuttle. Uh, I don't particularly love using the shuttle because um, the <laughs> shuttles are really small. Um, to drive on the going to the sun road, you have to fit, your vehicle has to fit like certain parameters. And so they have to keep their shuttles really small. Um, consequently, that just makes for really long lines. And sometimes, I mean, when we've taken the shuttle before, I mean, we've waited for an hour or more for a shuttle to take us back to our car. And so it's not ideal. Um, they're doing a good job with what they can do but due to just how many people are in the park and how small the shuttles have to be, those lines get really long. So there are other ways to see the park without using the shuttle. I tend to gravitate towards those just because I don't like to spend my time waiting in line instead of sightseeing. Red bus tours are also another option. And so if you wanna take a red bus tour instead of driving your own vehicle, uh, there is the option to do that as well. But in general, you will need your own vehicle. You probably will wanna plan on driving your own vehicle to most places in the park. And just um, making sure that you have a good plan so that you can time things right so that you're not getting stuck in traffic all the time. If you don't wanna make your own plan, I have one for you on Dirt In My Shoes. It is a very detailed hour by hour itinerary and you can just show up to the park and follow it and know that you are getting the best possible plan for avoiding the crowds, getting the parking, and seeing everything that there is to see. So definitely, if you want some help with that, click over to Dirt In My Shoes and you will find an itinerary for you that will help make sure that you see the park in the best way. My third tip for planning a trip to Glacier National Park is to make sure you book your lodging well in advance. 
So the lodging situation in Glacier, again, is just a little bit crazy uh, due to how many people want to visit the park and how competitive it can be. And so if you're hoping to stay in the park especially, you'll wanna plan your trip pretty far in advance so that you can take advantage of the times when those reservations open up. Lodging reservations usually open up a year in advance and you will wanna be there that year in advance because it will fill a lot of the lodging options, especially, you know, many Glacier and the Lake McDonald Lodge, some of those more busy and popular lodges will fill pretty close to that year in advance mark. The park also has 13 campgrounds, so if you're hoping to camp, there are a lot of options there. Some campgrounds are better than others uh, as far as getting to the sites and being close to all the can't miss stuff that you'll want to make sure you see. But uh, a lot of those camping options open up six months in advance. Um, a lot of the main campgrounds now are reservation only. Um, they've switched from first come first serve to reservation only in the past couple of years. And I anticipate that probably more campgrounds will start moving over to a reservation only system as well. So click over to the NPS site for Glacier. It's nps.gov forward slash Glacier to get the latest information on how they're making those camping reservations and which campgrounds are uh, reservable and which ones are first come first serve. You will wanna pay attention to that. And also, if you're hoping to get a reserve only campsite in Glacier, you will need to be there exactly when they open up. It is super competitive. Uh, I've had a hard time getting reservations. Sometimes it takes a few days to actually get something. And so you will want to pay attention to that and make sure that you're ready when those reservations open up. I have a video here on YouTube all about camping in Glacier where I will walk you through exactly which campgrounds I suggest staying in and uh, kind of what to expect during the reservation process. So be sure to check that out if you need help with your lodging in Glacier National Park. The fourth thing that you wanna know before going to Glacier is that Glacier is a large and very complex national park. It's one of the bigger parks. Uh, there's a lot of ground to cover. And as you're trying to plan your trip, you know, it can be hard to know the lay of the land or know what to expect if you've never been there before. So when you're looking at a map of Glacier National Park, so it goes all the way up in here, up above Goat Haunt here is Canada. We've got like Kalispell and stuff down in here. And then you have the large Glacier National Park here. And so when you're looking at a map, it looks pretty flat. You know, it's hard to tell what you're going to encounter as you're driving these roads. For example, if you're coming from the West Glacier entrance over here and you're trying to get up to Logan Pass, which is one of the most popular areas of the park. It doesn't look that long, it's about 32 miles. And so if you're looking at this map, you're thinking, okay, you know, 32 miles, that's not bad. But in reality, it takes about an hour and a half, sometimes even two hours, to drive from West Glacier up to Logan Pass. So to cover that 32 miles, you're talking about at least an hour and a half to get up there. What that means for you is that when you're planning out your trip and you're trying to decide what you wanna see and what you're hoping to do, you'll want to keep those driving times in mind because let's say you decide to book your lodging over here in West Glacier, but you really wanna to go to Many Glacier, which is one of the most beautiful parts of the park. It's going to take you probably about two and a half to three hours to drive up and around and over to Many Glacier from West Glacier. And so that's not ideal. That's, you know, more than half of your sightseeing time just in the car trying to get up there. And so as you're planning your trip out and you're looking at the distances, definitely make sure to give yourself enough time to drive between each point of interest because this park is huge. And so if you're hoping to get to some of those spots that are a little further away from where you're staying or uh, where you're booking your lodging or, or how you're spending your time that day, then it may not make sense to drive that far to go see those areas. And so again, that's where it comes in to be really important if you need to plan out your lodging in such a way that you're close to everything you wanna see so that you can cut down on that drive time um, and so that you can get around the park easier. 
There are other sections of Glacier that are really cool too that aren't along the going to the Sun Road. So I mentioned many Glacier up here. This is just one of the best places to see wildlife. It has some of the biggest and best hiking trails. It is fantastic. You've also got two medicine down here, which is similar to many glacier, just smaller and not as popular. And so that's a really nice area to come to if you're looking for some longer trails or a little bit more solitude. Then you've also got the Pole Bridge area or the North Fork area up in here, which has Bowman Lake, which is probably my favorite lake in Glacier. It is phenomenal. It's so beautiful. And so, you know, if you are hoping to get to all of these areas, then it's going to be really important that you know about how long it's going to take to drive from place to place so that you can plan out your days accordingly. Again, I am not leaving you to do this by yourself. If you need help with um, making a plan so that you can get to all of these areas and really explore the best parts of the park, um, then over at Dirt in My Shoes, I do have a glacier itinerary that will help you with that if it starts to feel overwhelming as you're trying to figure out drive times and where to stay and all the things that you need to do to plan for your glacier vacation. The last thing that you need to know before visiting Glacier is that Glacier has some of the best mountain hiking in the country. So if you're a hiker, if you're hoping to get out into the mountains, if you are hoping to immerse yourself in the rocks and the trees and the wildlife, then Glacier is one of the best places to do that. And so let's talk you through a few of your options. The great thing about Glacier is that there is a trail for everyone. And so there are some easier hikes or wheelchair friendly hikes that lead to just some gorgeous views such as the Trail of the Cedars. That's a really good one that I love. And you can extend that hike into something harder if you wanna go up to Avalanche Lake. You've got like the Hidden Lake Overlook, which is just fantastic. Grinnell Lake is one of my favorites or the hike to Fisher Cap Lake or Red Rock Falls. There's some really, really good ones that take you to spectacular views, even if you don't consider yourself to be a hiker. On top of that, if you are looking for some hikes that are longer and more challenging that take you up into some of the best scenery that you'll find anywhere, then Glacier has a trail for you too. So one of the most popular trails that's longer is the Highline Trail. That one is just phenomenal. But you've also got trails like Grinnell Glacier or Cracker Lake, Iceberg Lake, um, Saya Bend. You've got some really, really good trails that leave from some of the most accessible parts of Glacier and take you straight into the mountains. One thing you'll definitely wanna keep in mind while hiking in Glacier is that the temperatures do fluctuate and uh, because you're in the mountains, the weather may change really quickly. And so you'll want to be prepared with good layers. Um, make sure that you bring some warmer clothes because as you get into those higher reaches of the mountains, uh, especially if you're starting a trail from like Logan Pass or somewhere in the highest elevations of the park, uh, then it can be quite a bit colder than it is down at the bottom of the going to the sun road. And so you'll want to keep that in mind. Uh, make sure you bring some good warm layers. Be prepared for afternoon thunderstorms that roll in. Uh, wildfires can obscure views and uh, you just never know what you're going to get. And so you'll definitely wanna come prepared with what you can. I like to hike, I usually bring gloves because it is just super chilly, especially in the morning, uh, because you're at such a high elevation. Okay, I hope that these tips were helpful for you as you're planning your trip to Glacier National Park. I cannot wait for you to visit this beautiful national park. It is one of my favorites. I love going there. I love hiking and just being immersed in the fantastic mountain scenery, and I can't wait for you to visit. Glacier is a big and busy national park, and so if you need any help with any of your trip planning, please subscribe to the Dirt in My Shoes YouTube channel. I have a lot of information about Glacier for you, or click over to Dirt in My Shoes where I have an ultimate trip planning guide that will answer all of your questions and help make your dream trip a reality. I wish you all the best and hope that you have a fantastic Glacier vacation. Happy trails.